Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges, my name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer 3 video. Today's topic will be the possibility of yet another rework for the Vampire Counts, so without further ado, let's begin. The Vampire Counts are one of those factions where people either love them or hate them. They've had a lot of content, much to the joy and annoyance of some, with the latter of the two actually breathing a sigh of relief when the rework came into effect as most were sure that we wouldn't see any more Vampire Count content, at least for a long while. But as we're getting closer and closer to Game 3 and the possibility of characters such as Neferata appearing into the roster, I wanted to talk about many possible things that could feature in another Vampire Count rework. The first would be the basis of sub-faction identity, Right now, everything feels like a Von Karstein army, even those that aren't like, for example, the Lich Master. There are many different types of bloodlines in the lore of Warhammer Fantasy, which sadly got generalized after the release of Sixth Edition, but it's more than possible to have their spiritual successors in Total War Warhammer. Yes, I am aware that we have the Bloodline rework, which, yeah, was cool, but I'm talking in the case of sub-factions and making them more unique. We've covered this already for the Red Duke on how he could be made into a playable faction and have a unique sub-faction to the Vampire Counts with some relatively simple stuff such as adding in reskin Bretonian units that would make the faction unique enough. And we'll probably cover each of the different bloodlines separately in more detail, however I just wanted to go and touch upon them on brief here. For example, if Neferata does become a playable legendary lord, which does look quite likely to be honest, all her generic lord choices should be female considering the fact that the Lemian bloodline is mostly exclusively female. She should also have access to human servants, so very basic infantry, which would act as those who follow the Queen of the Vampires wishing for immortality. The same could be said about a possible Strigoi playable sub-faction, where the generic vampire lord should be replaced by Strigoi ghoul kings, because yeah, it just makes sense, and some unique units only accessible to them, such as maybe a basic mutant type. We're going to cover each respective bloodline in their own individual video as they could have a lot of different mechanics and so on and if we carried on here we'd be here for hours. I'm not sure about anyone else but to me I feel that it's rather important that we should get individualism in regards to each of the bloodlines. A few unique units here and there, some different mechanics and maybe some different lord choices and then it's just more replayability. Where you'd be more inclined to play the faction again and again if it had different start positions and different stuff in general. It doesn't have to be big changes, just some very small ones here and there can make each sub-faction drastically different. Whilst we're talking about sub-faction individuality, Vlad von Karstein should get access to the basic Empire State troops at all times. It's known in the lore that he used to build up armies of humans to fight alongside his dead, so just the basic swordsmen, crossbowmen and so on would be quite great to use. It's very thematic and lore friendly. Yes, you can get access to them in a limited format by the Blood Kiss scenario, but it'd be rather cool if just Vlad and Isabella had access to basic state troops at all times. Next, let's talk about possible changes to Vampiric Corruption. Vampiric Corruption has a lot of positives and negatives to the Vampire Count roster. When in your own territories, places with Vampiric Corruption act as a form of defense where enemies would travel through and take attrition damage. And when you invaded enemy territories with high corruption, you would be able to move freely. Whereas if the territories that you're invading has low corruption, your armies instead would start taking attrition damage. Yeah, this works, it makes sense thematically and so on, but how could it be improved? Generally, before you start invading areas with little to no vampiric corruption, you prepare yourself in advance with extra forces and so on, just in case you take some losses in terms of attrition damage. Generally, you can prepare for this in advance by either sending agents to spread corruption, or even having some buildings in your region which can spread corruption to adjacent territories. But what if you wanted to capture something far off in the map? What if your agents could establish vampire cabals within enemy cities, very similar, or well better yet said, a carbon copy of Skaven under Empire and Vampire Coast Vampire Coves? Many cities in the Warhammer world actually have vampire cabals, where they're extremely well hidden and exist in places such as Marienburg, Altdorf, and so on. The hidden buildings themselves could have a multitude of functions such as stealing a bit of income, spreading vampiric corruption at a higher rate, and maybe even prepare some special reinforcements that could arrive from inside the city walls. Just basic zombies and skeletons and so on, but it would be interesting to have that disrupt the enemy forces. And lastly, vampires are known to be very manipulative. They have spies and agents across all known reaches of the Warhammer world and have instigated wars at many occasions. Because of this, I feel that the vampires should benefit from an influence system very similar to how the High Elves have it. 
But better yet said, that one's a little bit basic, where I would prefer it if we had some inspiration from Total War Three Kingdoms, where the legendary Lord Sao Sao can manipulate different factions across the campaign map, usually in the sense of instigating poxy wars and so on, which to be honest, does make a lot of sense for the vampire counts to be able to do. Say you've just begun a campaign as Vlad von Karstein and you've been building yourself up in the regions of Sylvania. You feel like you're getting closer and closer to launching your invasion, but many of the surrounding factions are actually getting quite powerful. What if you could instigate a poxy war between two or more of them, and as they're fighting amongst themselves, wasting valuable resources and units, you can now begin your march and catch them all off guard. Honestly, these three basic ideas would probably change up the vampire counts dramatically. One is a reskin of units, the other is essentially a copy-paste of a mechanic, with the last idea being the one that would probably take the most time considering the fact that its mechanic is actually in another game, so it would have to be coded from scratch, but I feel that this is something that could work quite well and would be very positively received from the fans. That being said, what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and do you guys have any ideas on how the vampire counts can be reworked once again to be made a bit more fun? Let me know in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion, shall we? But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various different links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord, where you can get in contact with the Great Book team. Also in the description section below is an affiliate link with Element Games where you can buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Using this link and making a purchase and also using our special code which is also in the description below supports the channel at no extra cost to you which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, honestly it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to our Patreon Gibraltar LUSC for subscribing to us at our fame level, honestly mate you're super cool. And a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly the channel's been growing at a really quick pace lately and it's all thanks to you guys and we can't thank you guys enough. It's amazing to be able to talk to so many Warhammer fans across the globe. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.